Welcome back, options traders. Hello, everyone. And I wanted to post another technical indicator here that will help you, especially in these high volatility periods that we've been seeing here. This is in September, October 2018. Of course, these will not be the only times we're going to see these. We know we go through them all the time. But what we often try to do to assist with the timing is to figure out if we're at relative highs or lows. And the disparity index is a great way to figure those out. Now, the disparity index, not to be confused with the despair index, was created by Steve Nissen. I know many of you know that name, very famous in the technical world, written a ton of books on candlesticks and technical trading. And this index was, I believe, first mentioned in his 1994 book called Beyond Candlesticks. And the formula, again, is a fairly simple formula. I don't need to bring up an Excel spreadsheet to show how it's done. So it's another one that's a simple calculation. And all it does, it takes the current stock price, or if the markets are closed, it's going to look at the closing price. And the index is just going to report the percentage change of that closing price from a moving average that you choose. So for example, let's say that the stock closes at 105 or is perhaps currently trading at 105 if the market's open. And you have chosen the 50-day moving average, and the moving average is currently at 100. Well, the disparity index is going to show 5% because the current stock price is 5% above that moving average. So the idea here is that it shows relative levels of exhaustion. We looked at this with the price relative index, number of oscillators try to figure out highs and lows. And so, you know, the markets tend to say, we know that prices fluctuate around some long-term average, but there is a point when people feel that it's just stretched too far. And there's a point when people feel that it's just too far below the moving average. But where are those levels? How do you find that? You can't just look at your chart and say, well, it occurs when the candle is an inch above my moving average because that might work when you've got the stock at 100, but it's going to be different when the stock's at 150 and then at 200. The percentages usually stay the same, but those distances will differ. And people look at things in percentages. So another thing that we use with the disparity index is that when it crosses that zero line, it shows a change in momentum. So these are a couple of ways we're going to use it. We're going to look for crosses, and then we're going to look for relative highs and relative lows. It should go without saying, but reading the index is pretty easy. And if the index is at zero, what it means is that your current close or the current stock price if the market's open is the same price as the moving average that you chose. And if the index is greater than zero, then your current close is above that moving average. So again, if the index is showing plus five, the current stock price is 5% greater than that moving average. And if the index is less than zero, we're seeing a negative number, then your current close is below the moving average. And again, all we're trying to look for are relative highs and lows in terms of percentages where the market tends to feel that it's overbought or oversold. So to see how it works, let's go into the E-Trade platform and look at the disparity index. So here we are in the E-Trade platform, and I'm going to just use Amazon. I've been using that in the last few examples. Big day, by the way, up 47 points, almost 3%. And I think most of you know by now, we click on studies right here, come down here to all studies, and then right over here under D's is the disparity index. Choose that one. Now you get several parameters that you can choose from. We can choose what's called the field. Do we wanna look at the close, the open, the high? But generally we wanna look at the close. So I'm going to leave the default there. We can choose the type of moving average. I'm going to leave simple, but you can use time series, exponential, various, different types of moving averages. For most studies, I leave them at simple. And then we can choose the length. So I'm going to use a 50-day moving average because I just happen to have that sitting on my chart down here and it will help us for the examples. And then finally, you can choose the color. I'll just leave it here at black. We choose on save and it's just that easy. And right down here is the disparity index. So let's raise this up a little bit so we can see it better. And now just for some examples, let's grab our crosshairs. If you take a look at this candle right here, you see that big red candle there and it's sitting right on that moving average. Now the closing price wasn't on, but it was pretty close. So that means my disparity index should be fairly close to zero. And if you look straight down here at that cross here, you'll see that it's just about crossing that zero line. So that shows us that that current candle 
is basically sitting on the moving average that we've chosen. It's not above it and it's not below it. But if we look at this green candle over here, line up there, that should give us a negative reading. And if you look straight down below, right there, you'll see that it's about, about four and a half percent. So if we were to calculate the moving average value and the value of the closing price on that green candle, we would be about four and a half percent below the moving average. So that's all the disparity index is showing. So here's one way that you can use the index. First of all, take a look at the relative highs. So we can see that when the market gets up to about this high in percentage terms relative to my moving average, traders tend to think it's a little high. What is this level? Look to the right. That's about 15, 16%. So if we see a candle formation, such as a bearish engulfing or a bear kicker pattern, doji, things like this, the typical idea is that we want to see that it's at a top. Well, how do you identify a top? It's all relative. And now we can see that if it is about 15% or so above the moving average, that's going to have a lot more significance than if it's not. So for example, take a look at this big red candle right here, and that is a bearish engulfing formation right here at a top. We have this nice rally coming in, but how do we know that it's at a top? Is it at a relative high? Well, look straight down below, and if you look down here at your disparity index, you'll see that it is, let's line it up right about there, you're about 14% above the moving average. And I just said that somewhere around 15 or 16 tends to be the high. So yeah, we're close. I would give that bearish engulfing formation a lot more weight than if it was closer to the moving average. And we see that it did, in fact, have a pretty good dip down here. Conversely, let's look at this green candle. All right, it's a bullish engulfing right there, also a doji to bottom, but should we give it some merit? Well, if I line up my crosshairs on there, I look straight down below, and we'll see it lines up right about there. And if we look to the right, it's down about four and a half percent. Well, that seems to be about the bottom. We can see there's only one other time here recently that it got down to, to this level, but four and a half percent is pretty close to the bottom. So I would give that a lot more merit that that is a significant bullish engulfing pattern. And we did in fact take off on a very nice long bull run. So once again, the basic idea is that we can see in percentage terms how far above or below we are in terms of some moving average. And it just gives us a nice look because I can't always say that when I get stretched up this far above the moving average, well, how far is that? That's not gonna be the same if this is a $3,000 stock or a $4,000 stock. It's going to look different because the scales have changed but most of the time the traders will respond in terms of the same percentages. And that's what you're looking at down here. So again, for Amazon, at least in the past year, I would look at this and say somewhere around 15% above the moving average seems to be high. I would look at my lows down around here, maybe 4.93, I'd say somewhere around minus five seems to be about as low as we go below the moving average. Now, the second thing we can do is to look for crosses. So here we see the black line, our disparity line, crosses zero right here. That little gray line right there is zero. So when it crosses, we would say that seems to be a shift in momentum. Now the problem with using any of these indicators like this is that they are usually very quite lagging. And you can see that even if you took a trade here, you only got maybe four candles out of it before you would have gotten whipsawed bad to the other side. So I don't like using this so much for crosses, although it can be used, especially if it's in conjunction with another indicator, but I love using it for looking at relative highs and lows. So put the disparity index in your toolbox. You'll find it very useful, and please let me know what you think. For those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. You can also join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find the link in the description below.